and the Insta for 61. What a great day, look at the blue sky. I think today is a very good day to run. Hey, I'm Michael, I'm from Bavaria, Germany, and today I'm gonna go 360. So before I go, I put these little two guys into my bag. No! Do you hear the noise? Oh yeah, I remember, there are a bunch of guys outside who are working on a fiberglass pipe leading to my home office because since I moved here, I haven't had any internet yet. Servus. Servus. Kann ich da raus? Ist möglich? Auto? Ja. Ja? Okay, super. Now let's go to the beach. The sun is breaking through sometimes, but overall it's a bit hazy today. But this should be sufficient for what I'm up to. Here I am. There's a surfboard lying here. More surfboards. This is one of my favorite beaches here at Lake Kimse, and I promise you, when it's all green here, you have total beach feeling. As I mentioned in my first episode, I'm into innovative video gear, and that's why I own these two 360 cams, the Rilo and the Insta 361. What they basically do is, they're capturing your complete environment around you. Your feet, the sky, yourself and what is in front of you. You might know some videos on YouTube or Facebook where you can navigate in all directions, whether by wiping around or by panning your smartphone. My first 360 cam was my Insta 361 and I shot a little video with it while I traveled to the Croatian city of Zagreb, which I posted on Instagram and I did some tiny planets too, for fun. But then the Rilo 360 emerged. What makes it special to me is the software image stabilization that doesn't require any extra gimbal. Now, the Insta 361 tries to catch up with its new flow state stabilization. So, after having updated the firmware and the app, I'm here at a fast food restaurant to use their Wi-Fi to update my Insta360 app. Let's compare both cams. On the left I have my Rilo, on the right my Insta361. This is scenario one, running in a bright light situation. Here we go. First of all, what strikes me is that the Insta361 is rolling a bit. Now I'm zooming into the screen to show you the video compression details and as you can see the trees in the Rilo footage are much crispier whereas the Insta361 footage is blurry. I have to mention that I exported the video as 360 footage and noticed that the Rilo has a higher bitrate and thus a higher video quality. Now running the opposite direction. Now I'm switching to the unstabilized version and you can see how shaky the videos are originally. In that terms, both do a great job to compensate the shakes. So Insta361 made a great progress in image stabilization. Okay, now let's go to the next scenario. The light is too bright right now. I have to wait a couple of hours. Now comes scenario two, we have a low light situation and more details in the picture like trees and branches. The reason why I wanted to test stabilization in a lower light situation is that naturally the video footage gets more motion blur, what would result in an effect that looks like little micro shakes. And as you can see, the Insta361 has many of them that are even increased by a higher video compression. But when you see the unstabilized version, the Insta361 does a good job stabilizing the footage. From Lake Kimse to V2. 
this nice place with an even brighter situation, blue sky, some nice white clouds. This should be an ideal situation for 360 cams. I want to apologize the smudged lenses. Actually, they're not smudged, but because I use them a lot, they already have scratches, especially the Rilo. What is the reason you can see these little spots? But aside from that, these are the best conditions to shoot a 360 video. Evenly colored areas with nearly no details like a blue sky minimizes compression artifacts. However, when you look at the clouds of the Insta361, you can still see these little micro shakes. But when it comes to color, the Insta361 does a better job. The colors are more natural, richer, and in spite of higher compression, you can see more color details, whereas the Rilo usually has a red tint and doesn't have that color range. And that's because I shot all the Insta361 test footage in log mode. In terms of sharpness, you seem to see every single stone on the gravel path in the Rilo video, whereas the stones in the Insta361 are slurred. Again, here's the unstabilized version, and seeing this makes you wonder how it can be done without any gimbal. The sun is gone a bit, more clouds have emerged. In this scenario, I want to test how stabilization behaves when you have lots of details in the picture, and that's why I'm gonna run in the forest. Now comes a test in an extreme condition with lots of details, low light and flashing lens flares. And here's the surprise for me. Although the Rilo has a better image quality to me, I feel that the better color science of the Insta361 compensates that and even exceeds the perceived image quality of the Rilo. Regarding the stabilization, there's nothing to complain on both 360 cams except the little blurry micro shakes on the Insta361. So, after these tests, I'm going home now and I want to draw a conclusion. I am back again and before I draw a final conclusion, I want to mention that my tests were far from scientific. First of all, both do a great stabilizing job. With the new firmware update, the Insta361 with its so-called flow state stabilization catches up with the Rilo. But when you look closer at the Insta361, you still have these little jitters, even in bright conditions. And I personally don't like the slight rolling of the Insta361. Here's my conclusion. In terms of stabilization, the Rilo is the one for me. It meets the quality I personally need to do my vlogs. But given the fact that the Insta361 is more inexpensive than the Rilo, the Insta361 made a huge leap in stabilization. If you enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe. See you next time!